ties Eros and civilization directly into the 60s rebellion he was part of. Uh, Marxism is a, a bankrupt creed and was bankrupt in, in, by the 50s or earlier. People understood it didn't, it didn't work. There was no working class that was going to make a revolution. Capitalism, people were happy with capitalism, basically because it makes well, it's spread more money to more people than any other system in history. So they tried to find other uh, sources of revolutionary uh, energy. And one was the idea of sexual repression on the 60s. I mean, it was a way of, people always think up complicated theories to, you know, do what they want to do. People wanted to do a lot in the 60s, so. If Herbert Marcuse, you know, gave them the intellectual justification for having a lot of sex with a lot of people, uh, a lot of the time. That's what Eros and Civilization, that's the title of his famous book on it, is about. Marcuse is also the source of one of political correctness's most notable characteristics. It's total intolerance for any viewpoint but its own. Marcuse argued that our free American society was actually a deception, that its true tolerance is somehow repressive, while he argued for something called liberating tolerance. And what he meant by that was liberating toleration or liberating tolerance meant intolerance from ideas of movements from the right and tolerance for any ideas from the left. Uh, it's a, you know, a recipe for uh, repression. Even Martin Jay, a great admirer of the Frankfurt School, admits the totalitarian aspect of Marcuse. Perhaps his most significant essay in terms of impact, the one we haven't even mentioned, an essay on repressive tolerance, uh, written in the late 60s, which argued that uh, because the um, tolerance of different beliefs produced no action at all, because every belief seemed to be equal to uh, all others, and uh, racist and uh, neo-fascist and militarist beliefs were given equal weight to those that were pacifist and emancipatory. Uh, uh, this led ultimately to the uh, problems of uh, political correctness and incorrectness uh, in the 1980s. Uh, that is, if you had a strong notion of who was politically correct, you could then be intolerant to those who weren't. And sometimes this can be used as a license by people on the left to deny uh, free speech to people they disagreed with. Through these works, Marcuse became the main agent of transmission of the Frankfurt School's ideas. Marcuse was a tremendously important uh, influence on the thinking of uh, young people in those days. He was one of the, the uh, spiritual fathers of the movement. And through Marcuse, the new left found the rest of the Frankfurt School. And then in the 1960s, they were rediscovered by students uh, who uh, looked back at the work they'd done and rediscovered a source of a non-traditional, non-communist Marxism, which they found as an inspiration for the uh, student movement in the 1960s. Jay pays Marcuse uh, the then, ultimate compliment as a revolutionary. He became a kind of celebrity. I mean, in Paris, there were banners that said Marx, Mao, and Marcuse. So he was, uh, you know, luckily because of the alliteration up there with a couple of uh, pretty heavy hitters. And the consequences of the Frankfurt School's work now engulf us all. Martin Jay pays them due credit. Well, it's fascinating. If you compare them with other figures from the so-called Western Marxist tradition, they are perhaps more alive than virtually anybody else. Roger Kimball, although coming from the opposite political perspective from Martin Jay, agrees. The institution of um, the ideas of radical multiculturalism in the academy and uh, what you might call its enforcement wing, namely the ideology of political correctness, uh, testify to the uh, um, vitality uh, of some of those ideas, some of the ideas of the Frankfurt School. We asked former New Left leader David Horowitz what the members of the Frankfurt School, Horkheimer, Adorno, Marcuse, might think if they could come back and visit one of America's politically correct campuses today. Well, I, I'm sure they would be thrilled because they would be, you know, gods.